For as long as man has dreamed, he has dreamed of soaring with the birds. With a modern paraglider, we can actually realize that ancient dream. Some of us feel more at home in the sky than on the earth, but none of us are born with wings. Free flight is only possible with the proper equipment, specialized training, and systematic attention to safety. Hi, I'm Marty Divietti, and I've been flying since 1991. During that time, I've taught hundreds of students to paraglide. While I consider paragliding to have manageable risks, a number of flying accidents over the years have reminded us that safety in flight begins on the ground. Despite all too common lapses in pre-flight routines, pilots often get lucky and walk away with no more than a few scratches or a tangled up glider. But when luck runs out, the results can be tragic. Whether you're a new student or an experienced pilot, you should periodically review your pre-flight procedures. By paying systematic attention to safety on the ground, you will be setting yourself up for success in the air, which will keep you flying safely for many years to come. Yes, I did it! Flying sites vary greatly. Some have beautiful open launches with many options for emergency landings. Others are wild and rugged and demand more advanced flying skills. While sites generally have an established minimum rating, you and your instructor, if you are still in a program, must decide if you are up to it. Pre-flight safety begins with this assessment. Remember that coastal sites, mountain sites, and tow sites all have their individual demands. Ask yourself these five questions. Do I feel comfortable setting up and launching at this site? Is there an established landing zone that I can safely land in? even if the conditions get strong or the prevailing wind switches. If I don't make an LZ, can I handle the emergency landing option? Are the potential terrain effects like rotor, canyon suck, and powerful thermal activity within my capability? Does it feel right? Listen to your gut. Remember, if a site seems scary, you may not be ready for it. You've carefully assessed the site. You've walked the landing zones and studied the terrain. Before you unpack your glider, you must assess the weather. For beginner and novice rated pilots, easy, forgiving, mild conditions offer the best scenarios for safe learning experiences. Intermediate and advanced pilots are released to fly in a much wider range of conditions, which will allow them to hone their advancing skill set. It's always better to be on the ground wishing you were in the air than in the air wishing you were on the ground. It may seem obvious, but one of the most difficult pre-flight checks to remember is a head check. You're not ready to fly until you're mentally ready to fly. First, are you in good health? Second, is your mood right? Are you feeling overly daring? Or perhaps the opposite, nervous and unsure? Are you upset from a bad day on the stock exchange? Or feeling like you shouldn't have eaten that warm sushi last night? Are visitors or other pilots distracting you with cameras? Conspicuous spectating? or untimely advice? Assessing your physical and mental condition and recognizing distractions are very important factors in keeping your flying safe. It's critical that your mind is clear and focused and ready for the demands of free flight. 
Don't even set up if your head isn't in the game. The weather is perfect. You're feeling good about flying today. It's time to set up and check your equipment. Without safe equipment, you can't have a safe flight. Check your risers for wear. Make sure small mallions are screwed shut. Lines should be clean with no fraying or kinks. Check the glider for any tears. Make sure the reserve parachute pins are seated correctly. Your carabiner should be undamaged and should operate smoothly. If you are interrupted, start over at the beginning. You and your glider are good to go. Before you get into the harness and clip in, be sure to reassess the weather. Conditions often get stronger or change dramatically while you're getting set up. You must have the maturity to postpone or even cancel your decision to launch if conditions have become questionable. Never consider your initial weather check your final weather check. It's almost time to fly. Many pilots like to go through a specific pre-flight routine. Check that reserve pins are in place. Check that the reserve handle is seated correctly. Make sure you're set up to turn the correct way so you don't get a riser twist when you launch. Make sure your helmet is on. Carabiners are locked. Chest and leg straps are buckled. And your radio is working. Radio check. It's particularly important that you check your leg straps. No matter how many times you've flown a site or how experienced of a pilot you are, a lapse at this critical stage can cost you your life. As a final step, it never hurts to make sure one last time that all your straps are buckled. Now that you're ready to launch, go through a mental assessment to determine all is still a go. It's never too late to unclip, pack up, and go home. Do you still feel good about flying this site, launching safely, and getting to a landing zone without mishap? Is the weather still within your capabilities and consistent enough that you're not launching into the beginning of something bad? Is your harness in place and ready for launch? Is your helmet on securely? Is your radio working? Check, check. Are your instruments ready? Do you feel good? Do you feel ready to fly? Are you buckled in? Are you buckled in? If there are any distractions or delays, check again to make sure your leg and chest straps are secure. Your leg loops are locked. You're ready to fly. Stay safe and have fun. After all, that's what it's all about.